What's up guys, this is Chris from Honest Outlaw here, and today I just wanted to do a quick video uh, about some Glock accessories because I had uh, a few questions about them. I figured I'd go over some that I don't like and that I don't particularly recommend, and then I would go over at the end maybe some that you might want to look into that might just make your shooting experience a little more fun, a little easier. A lot of people say that you can't buy technique, you can't buy skill, and you absolutely can't. But you can make it a little bit easier on you with some well-timed and, and good accessories, but you can also make your shooting experience a lot worse if you buy accessories or upgrades that will make your gun less reliable, because that's what we don't want. So that's what we're gonna try to avoid here today in this particular video. Before we do that, I wanna mention my Patreon supporters. Thank you guys very much. You guys provided the ammunition and funds to buy some of the accessories, optics, and things like that that you see on the table. And I really appreciate that. If you want to join the Pager Squad, all you got to do is go to the link in the description and uh, sign up. Also in that description is a link to a local shelter in Ames, Iowa. It's the YSS. It's a shelter I support in every video. And it's because those kids could really use your help. Do a good deed, go down and donate a couple bucks to those kids. Everybody donated a dollar or two to those kids. We wouldn't have any problems. So go down there and if you enjoy the video, just donate to the kids. So now we're going to get into five accessories that you really shouldn't buy for your Glock. Number one, we're going to be talking about aftermarket barrels. So this here is an Agency Arms aftermarket barrel. And I got it because it's gold and it looks kind of sweet and I'm a Hawkeye fan and I like the gold and black. Tin coated so it's very durable. Agency Arms is a company that if you are going to get uh, a Glock barrel from, that's a pretty good one. I've had a few uh, threaded barrels from them that worked really well. Usually the only time I ever change barrels is when I'm looking to thread it for a suppressor or a comp or something like that. Agent Jarvis didn't send me these, no affiliation with them. I just, that's one of the companies that I like. So uh, there's other companies as well, like KKM, uh, things of that, that nature. There's a couple on eBay that I've tried that were really shitty, and there's a couple from like Lone Wolf that didn't work very well. Uh, some of the issues you're gonna have with an aftermarket barrel is the fact that the slide interfaces with the barrel the whole way up and the whole way back, right? So if you add friction or you change specs in any way to increase accuracy, for example, which is the most common reason why they do that, you can seriously affect reliability, especially with slightly lower powered ammo, like the common stuff that you buy at like Shields, big box stuff, let's go with that. So aftermarket barrel is one of those things where I don't think you actually need to change. People change an aftermarket barrel, number one, for looks mostly, number two, to like kind of flex on the gram, but the people that want functionality of an aftermarket barrel, they usually change it for accuracy. In my personal opinion, especially with the new Gen 5s, with the Marksman barrel, which is hilariously marketed, but that being said, it's extremely well made and I can make hits very easy out to 100 yards with that barrel. And more so instead of accuracy, what you actually get is usually just a little bit of bullshit, a little bit of marketing. And if you're not looking to thread your barrel, I just wouldn't suggest it. Why waste reliability for accuracy when accuracy really isn't what you're achieving in the first place? If you can hit at 100 or even 150 or even 200 yards with a factory Glock barrel, I don't see a need to switch it in my personal opinion. Uh, that being said, if you want it to look different or whatever, go ahead. Just be very careful about the specs of the barrel that you buy and the coating that's on it because adding extra friction can also cause reliability issues as well. And then you're gonna end up changing recoil springs and all that fun stuff, which we'll get into here in a second. All right, so now uh, before I get into the next one, I just wanna talk about Zeb barrels again. Uh, Zeb barrels I found are extremely reliable as well, so they're another option and you can get them right off eBay, which is easier. So uh, the number two thing I wanted to talk about is upper parts, specifically upper parts, because in an upper, uh, you have several different parts that people change all the time, specifically to gain a better trigger pull. For example, the firing pin, the firing pin spring, extractor, plunger, uh, and several other things in there. We'll take it apart quick and I'll show you what they look like here. Uh, one of the things you can change if you want is the base plate, because that really doesn't do anything. But you can see that this has an aftermarket here, this Zev OZ9, so basically just aftermarket Gen 3 parts. And all this stuff is done uh, to make the trigger pull better. And uh, one of the issues that you're gonna have with that is you are going to end up with almost guaranteed reliability problems, either with an aftermarket extractor, which is a really terrible idea, or an aftermarket firing pin or firing pin spring, having light strikes or failures to extract or all that fun stuff that you get with these upper parts kits. These upper part kits run anywhere from 100 to $220, and I've bought a whole bunch for my life because I've ran through the gamut of Glock accessories like you wouldn't believe. I've spent thousands of dollars on Glock accessories over my lifetime, even before the channel and one of the things that almost always 
decreases reliability is going to be any sort of upper parts, especially the uh, firing pin or firing pin spring. This is my personal opinion. There are many awesome companies that sell these kits. However, I've had bad experiences with a lot of them, especially if you run like cheap Russian ammo or something like that, which is not gonna be cheap very long. Haha, <laughs> thanks for that. But overall, I think out of all these, this probably should have been number one. I just thought about it second. So the third thing that I would not recommend changing is going to be the recoil spring. Now the recoil spring, and you can see this is a non-factory recoil spring in my Glock 34 here. This is actually a tungsten captured recoil spring. Uh, they come in different variations. You can either get tungsten uh, that either captured or not captured, which is really fun when you take them out. The Terran Tactical ones shoot up into the fucking sky <laughs> when you take them off if they're not captured. This one actually you can screw off and screw back on so you can still change the springs. Uh, one of the problems with these Sorry, I'll go through them first. So this, there's tungsten, there's also stainless steel, and then there's plastic. The factory ones are plastic generally. So uh, people change these because like, every once in a while on like three blue moons, you'll have a plastic guide rod break. And okay, that, that happens to maybe like one person out of 16 million that shoots tons and tons of rounds. Uh, I've never personally seen one, although I have heard of them. But the reason why I generally don't recommend you change them is because you're going to have to do a lot of tampering. And for a stock gun, I would just leave the stock recoil spring in. It's gonna run perfectly with uh, defensive ammo and that's what you actually want. Now, uh, if you run competitions and stuff, you're gonna end up lowering your recoil spring to lower the uh, perceived recoil or muzzle flip or whatever, or increase the cycle time or whatever you're trying to achieve. Uh, let's say you've got a bunch of slide cuts and now all of a sudden your gun doesn't work, which we'll get into in a minute. Then you can change the recoil spring to recalibrate the cycle time in order to actually make the gun work. The problem with that is, is you're gonna have to mess with a lot of different springs anywhere from regular to flat wire, from the factory spring to a 17 to a 15 to a 13. I've ran 11 pound springs in compensated Glocks just to make them run correctly. And overall, I really think that this is something better left to a tinkering or competitive gun and on a stock or a defensive gun, I just honestly wouldn't recommend it. That being said, there's, there's some advantages to it, don't get me wrong, but there's also some disadvantages to it. The advantage to it is that you're going to gain some weight below the gun, or you might be able to change the cycle time to better suit how fast or slow you'd like to shoot. The downside to it is it will definitely decrease reliability almost no matter what, uh, especially if it's your first time doing it and you're not really sure what parts or what pounds to buy for what ammo or for what so slide length that you're actually going to use. So just be aware of that something that's very intriguing, very interesting, and I know a lot of people change, but go into this with a lot more knowledge than maybe some of the other accessories. But I would definitely recommend, a, if you're gonna do it, I would definitely recommend a stainless steel or a tungsten, and I would recommend a uh, captured one that you can disassemble. And the reason for that is you spend like $150 on one of these bitches, and you get one that's not captured, and then all of a sudden you have to change the spring in like 5,000, 10,000 rounds, and you can't change it, you gotta buy a whole new one. So if you buy one that you can screw off or that is not captured, you can change the recoil spring for like $15. So there you go. Another thing I wanted to talk about is going to be aftermarket slides that I usually don't recommend that you will see a shitload of on my guns. And uh, the reason for that is because it looks cool and it can change the functionality of the pistol a little bit. I run a lot of 2011s, so I like to go up over and use that maneuver, and that's very difficult to do with a stock gun most of the time. Now, the new Gen 5s do have front slide serrations, but they're not awesome. However, with that, you are going to change the cycle time of your gun. So when you do a bunch of cuts like this from like Jaegerworks, which I absolutely do recommend if you know what you're doing, you're gonna to have to change a bunch of other things too, like the recoil spring and stuff like that because you are changing the cycle time of the gun. If you lighten the slide, it's gonna go faster. So a lot of people will lighten the slide and expect to reduce recoil. That's not necessarily true. You are going to increase the cycle time, you're gonna increase your time that you have uh, between shots or decrease it, I should say, and increase the amount of speed that you're gonna have, but it might actually make the gun recoil more or at least perceived recoil more. So be aware of that. Another issue with this is gonna make the, the slide more brittle, so it's more prone to breaking, especially something that's very lightened like this. If I take a factory Glock side and drop it from 20 feet in the air 14 times, it's not gonna break. This one actually might, especially in these areas right here. Another thing that you're gonna have an issue with is dirt and debris. 
Uh, now the Glock 34 always has an open top like this, but as you can see the 17, the P80 does not, whereas this is definitely does. Now if you drop this in sand, dirt, stuff like that, you actually can get debris in there that will affect the cycling of the slide. Uh, most of the time not, but sometimes yes. So the point I'm trying to make is you're spending 200 to 700 dollars, depending on what if you send yours in or if you buy one online like this Zev here. Uh, and again, I'm no affiliation, no affiliation with Zev whatsoever. I just like their optics cuts because they're real low. Uh, that really could drastically affect the reliability of a pistol. And on a defensive style gun, I would again not recommend that for the dirt and debris, for the cycle time change, and for the ability to now break your slide, which you couldn't of earlier. Um, the juice really isn't worth the squeeze on a defensive gun, in my personal opinion, unless you're really good with it and use it all the time, because I do say that I do recommend that, but then I also run this Glock 34 all the time, so what are you going to do? Now another thing I want to talk about is Cerakote. So this, this uh, slide right here is Cerakoted because it looks super cool. However, if you have a company that doesn't do Cerakote very well, you're gonna have a gun that doesn't fucking work very well. That's my buddy Nick, PVU on Instagram. He just did a video on his CZ uh, Tactical Sport 2 or 3 or something like that. Maybe it's Tactical Sport Orange, I can't remember. But his gun was, the slide was Cerakoted, the hammer was Cerakoted, some of the internal parts were Cerakoted, and what a surprise, it's it's a dumpster fire. It's, it's a gun where you can only do malfunction clearance drills on because now you've increased friction where you otherwise would not have had friction. Right, So that slows the process of all the parts moving and things like that, and then you have some serious issues. Now you can wear that down, yes, but it changes the lubricity of the parts and everything, so you end up slowing things down that shouldn't be slowed down, and then you're going to have failure to feeds, failure to extracts, all that fun stuff. So even though Cerakote looks really cool and it makes your gun waterproof and everything like that, make sure you have somebody that is good at putting it on, put it on, or you do a lot of research before you put it on yourself because you also can buy Cerakote kits, shake and spray drill coat kits, all that stuff, and you can do it yourself, I've done it. However, just make sure you know what you're doing or just avoid it altogether because the factory coating, uh, in my opinion, is more than good enough most of the time, especially on the Gen 5s. Now, another thing that I wanted to talk about quick that's kind of a number six, but top five just has such a good ring to it, is going to be aftermarket magazines or aftermarket base plates. Glock factory magazines, they work great. They're cheap, they're available. Don't save $3 to buy a cheap Korean mag or whatever the hell and then make your perfectly reliable gun unreliable. That's my personal opinion. I mean, if you get into a lot of different guns, you won't be complaining about Glock magazine prices because like I said, you can get this anywhere from $15 to $30 to $40 depending on where you go, what state you live in. Uh, I found these for well under 20 bucks a ton of times. I have over 100 of these. And they work really well and the base plates work really well also. If you get into the cheap stuff, especially base plates that you get that have like a plus five, they don't change the recoil spring, don't do that. So uh, don't get cheap mags, don't get cheap base plates. That'll save you some trouble in the future. Now, a couple, a couple accessories that I really do like are going to be an optic. I like an optic a lot. Uh, if you can afford an optic, uh, get an optic. That's really it. Get a durable, reliable optic, get a set of coat and sights, and you're off to the races. An optic is one point of aim. It allows you to threat focus really well, so when you go, oh shit, somebody's in my house, or whatever's gonna happen, uh, or there's a deer you're shooting at, or whatever you're trying to hit, in real life, you're gonna have a threat response that narrows your vision, you're gonna threat focus, you're not gonna be able to stop yourself, you're, not gonna, you're gonna have a really hard time focusing on that front sight that people have trained you to do for years. You don't have to do that with a red dot because you can look at the target, superimpose the red dot on them, pull the trigger, and you're good to go. So an optic's really nice, it's also really good for accuracy purposes, only lining up one thing, it's just a lot easier to hit things at distance. Now another thing I recommend is going to be extra texture on your gun. Now you can do that with a bunch of different ways. You can buy a soldering iron or whatever you want to buy and you can stipple it yourself for like five bucks, ten bucks on Amazon. You can buy one of those, have it shipped to you, take about an hour and stipple it. You can also buy epoxy and silicone carbide and you can uh, put that shit all over your gun and you can pour the silicone carbide on it, wait a day and you have permanent sandpaper grips which is really nice. You can also go the talon grip route uh, which is basically just like a $10, $15 thing. I can't remember how much talent grips are these days. I get them on eBay all the time. Talent grips never sent me anything either. Uh, however, they're a semi, well, not really a permanent. They're kind of a, what's the word for not permanent? <laughs> Temporary. Temporary. We both they're, had to think about it. Jesus, it's been a long day. You, you can, uh, 
you can put a talent grip on there for a while, for like a year, year and a half, and everybody, I see so many tactical instructors, I would never use talent grips because they fall off. Well, if they fall off, you just have the same fucking grip you had before, don't you? So what's the real downside to it? So you could, if you're thinking about silicone carbide, you could buy talent grips or a bunch of companies make them now, sandpaper grips that have glue on them. And you stick them on there and run it for a while. If you like that feeling, then go with a silicone carbide. You can also go with rubber, which I do on a lot of my carry guns. Uh, rubber grips are real nice because they give you a little extra texture, but they don't rub your stomach too much, especially for like a Penix carry and stuff like that. Uh, another thing I would recommend is going to be steel sights. Uh, these things are 60 bucks. These are Ameriglow Spartans. High definition front, blacked out rear. Perfect, uh, in my opinion, as far as durability. Uh, they have a tritium vial in the front, so you have night sights, and they're only 60 bucks, and they're significantly better than Glock sights. Glock sights do break. I hear some people say they don't. They definitely do. I've had them break. So for a pretty cheap price, you can upgrade your sighting system. If you don't want to go a dot, I would definitely recommend going high definition sights. They work pretty well. Timney trigger we talked about. Last thing I want to mention that you definitely should have. Some of these upgrades were theoretical, but one of these I really suggest you have on defensive guns, especially a home defense gun, and that is going to be a weapon light. This is an Olight Valkyrie here. I like that a lot. It's probably the cheapest option that I would go. Uh, it's got this little QD mount here, which is pretty dope, and you can pop it on and off, and the switches are not great, but they're pretty good with enough power to shoot at 100 plus yards, it's having a very low profile and weight. Another one I like a lot, Anything from Streamlight is really good to go, in my personal opinion. My favorite weapon light from them is TLR-7A. It has the upgraded switches on it, which makes the uh, Streamlight work that much better. And it's very small. It has more than enough uh, uh, power to shoot at 50 to 75 yards, pretty easy. It's got a lot more flood than throw. The, the Olight has a little bit more throw, so if you're looking for longer distance, if you're looking for a shorter distance, but more compact package, this one's probably more durable than the Olight as well. So this is a really good option. And then finally, uh, my favorite probably, but also the most expensive is gonna be the brand new Surefire X300 Ultra. This thing is really powerful, it's really durable. It has a pretty decent mounting system on it, just a little screw thing you screw on and off. The old ones had those tabs that would work, but sometimes they get stuck. I like this mounting system better, uh, but these lights are very expensive at around $200, but they're super durable as well. The downside to them is they hang out a lot further because they use a bigger bevel, but that also gives you more throw, so trade-offs with everything, right? So overall, I hope that helps you guys out with some Glock accessories. Uh, all this shit was just off the top of my head. None of this was provided by anybody. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. Peace out about your local homeless shelters. Remember to recycle. I'll check you later.